All right, so one more example here of doing a change of variables to find a solution to a homogeneous differential equation. All right, so here we're going to solve dy over dx equals y to the third plus 2y squared times x minus y times x squared, all divided by y times x squared plus x to the third. So again, notice all the terms in this case uh, have degree 3. y cubed, we've got y squared times x to the first, that has degree 3 y to the first times x squared, that has degree 3, same thing, and then we have clearly degree 3. So the first thing we're going to do here is divide. So we've got y to the third plus 2y squared times x minus y times x squared, y times x squared plus x to the third. So here we're going to multiply by 1 over x, again to the degree, which in this case is degree 3. And now we'll simplify. So let's see, we, maybe we can do this a little faster. We'll have y to the third over x to the third. So that's y over x cubed. We'll have two times, let's see, we'll have, uh, when we take x and divide by x to the third, we're going to have an x squared in the bottom. We've got y squared in the top. So I'm going to write that as y over x quantity squared. Then we would be left with, let's see, x squared over x cubed. That's going to leave us with y over x. In the denominator, when we uh, distribute, we'll again have y x squared over x cubed, which will leave us with y over x. And then we'll have x to the third over x to the third, which is going to leave us with positive 1. So again, this is our differential equation, dy over dx. And this, is again, is where we do our substitution. So we're going to let v equal y over x. So again, that tells us that y equals x times v. And again, that means that dy over dx will be 1v plus x times dv over dx, just by taking the derivative. Likewise, if we take our substitution and plug it into our equation, we'll get that dy over dx is going to equal, well, v to the third uh, plus 2v squared minus v all over, I guess, v plus 1. All right, so now we're going to set these two expressions equal to each other, and we'll have a separable differential equation. And again, hopefully it won't be completely terrible to solve. So we'll set it equal to v to the third plus 2v squared minus v all over v plus 1. All right, so I'm going to subtract the v from both sides. So I'm going to subtract the v from both sides. And I'm going to write that as v over 1 because, again, I basically want to combine this stuff as a uh, single fraction. Well, I, I guess to do that, I would have to get common denominators. So I would have to multiply numerator and denominator by v plus 1. All right, so our x dv over dx, just chilling out. Uh, we've got v plus 1 in the denominator. Then we've got v cubed plus 2v squared minus v. And then it looks like uh, we'll have a minus v squared. And I guess we would have a uh, minus 1 at the end of the day. Uh, excuse me. Oh, I almost messed up. So minus v squared minus v to the first. Oh, that would have been terrible. Okay, so I'm just distributing and subtracting. Long problem, so don't drop your guard, I guess, right? So we've got v to the third, 2v squared minus 1v squared will leave us with uh, a positive v squared. And then we've got negative v minus v, I guess that's minus 2v. And that's all over v plus 1. All right, so now what we'll do, kind of the same thing as the other examples, I'm going to multiply the dx over to the right side. I'm going to divide by x, so that'll give us our 1 over x dx. We've already got the dv on the left side, 
So to move this stuff over, we'll have to divide by it, or equivalently multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll have v plus 1 over v cubed plus v squared minus 2v. And now we're going to integrate both sides. So the antiderivative of v plus 1 over v cubed plus v squared minus 2v dv. That's going to equal the integral of 1 over x dx. So the right side's pretty easy to integrate. That's just going to give us the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x. The fun part is going to be um, solving the left side. So, all right, so kind of off to the side here, I'm going to integrate v plus 1 over v cubed plus v squared minus 2v. But I recognize this as being a rational function. You have a polynomial in v over a polynomial in v. So we should be able to use partial fractions. So I'm going to factor the denominator. It looks like we would have v times v squared plus v minus 2. And hopefully this factors a little bit further. It looks like I think it does. So we'll factor the quadratic v squared plus v minus 2. I guess we'll have v plus 2 and v minus 1. Um, that looks good to me. So now we're going to have to do our fun partial fraction decomposition to integrate this, uh, this lovely function on the left here. So I'm going to do the partial fraction decomposition. So v plus 1 over v times v plus 2 times v minus 1. Okay, so recall each little factor gets its own little fraction. Okay, so in the numerator, we'll just generically put constants, a, b, and c. And then recall, we just multiply both sides by the denominator. So v times v plus 2 times v minus 1. So when we do that on the left side, again, it's just everything's going to cancel out, and we'll be left with v plus 1. On the right side, when we multiply this whole term to everything, on the first term, the v's will cancel, and we'll be left with a times v plus 2 times v minus 1. When we distribute all of this stuff to the second term, the v plus 2's will cancel. So we'll have b times v times v minus 1. And then when we multiply all of this stuff to the last term, uh, the v minus 1's will cancel out. So we'll be left with v times v plus 2. Getting closer, I promise. Okay, so now we've got to solve for a, b, and c. So this is, we could do the equating coefficient stuff. I'm going to just kind of pick good values for v. So notice if we let v equal, how about negative 2? Um, on the left side, we'll get negative 2 plus 1. That'll give us negative 1. On the right side, when we plug in negative 2, we'll get 0 for the first term. Our second term, I guess we'll have b times negative 2 times negative 2 minus 1. But again, for our last term, when we plug in negative 2, we're going to get 0. So this is negative 1 equals b. I guess this is negative 2 times negative 3. Negative 2 times negative 3 is going to give us positive 6. So negative 1 over 6, that's going to be our value for b. All right, so let's see. I guess we could plug in v equals positive 1 as well. If we plug that in on the left side, we'll get 1 plus 1 or 2. On the right side, again, if we plug in v equals 1, the first term is going to be gone. Hey, the second term is also going to be gone. We'll have c times 1 times 1 plus 2. So I guess that's 1 times 3 or 3. So we'll get 2 thirds as our value for c. And I guess the last value we, we could plug in that would uh, make life easy for us would be to plug in v equals 0. So on the left side, we'll just be left with positive 1. On the right side, we'll have a times, well, 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 1. Uh, the second term is going to be gone. The third term is going to be gone. So we'll be left with negative 1 half as our value for a. Alrighty, so 
thinking, what the heck are we trying to do, right? So we're trying to integrate this big old function. So again, we said we could break that up as a over v plus b over v plus 2 plus c over v minus 1. Okay, so we figured out our values now for um, a, b, and c. Where are they all at? So let's see, we said a had value negative 1 half. Um, our b value was negative 1 sixth. Our c value, we said that was 2 thirds. So we've now done our partial fraction decomposition. Um, so basically we've broken up this integral on the left side. And again, that's going to equal the integral of 1 over x dx. All of these you could just integrate by doing a u substitution. Uh, the first one's just natural log. Uh, same thing here, let u equal v plus 2. And then you could do a different you know, substitution and let uh, u or w, whatever you want to call it, equal v minus 1. So when we integrate, we'll get the natural logarithm of v minus 1 over 6 times the natural logarithm of v plus 2, plus 2 thirds times the natural logarithm of v minus 1. Um, on the right side, the antiderivative of 1 over x will be ln of x. Um, we'll stick our plus c on the right side. We could certainly use properties of logarithms uh, to combine all these logarithms. Uh, I'll leave that as an algebra exercise. Um, I'm not going to do that. Um, but we can always definitely want to substitute uh, get rid of the v. So we'll have negative 1 half times the natural logarithm. Again, v was y over x minus 1 over 6 times the natural logarithm of y over x plus 2. And then plus 2 thirds times the natural logarithm of y over x minus 1 equals the natural logarithm of x plus c. And that is now going to be our general solution.